Okay, yet another part of the Delancey Street kit, one of my favorite parts, and the only one that actually features clapboard. So we went in a totally different direction on this kit, which, if you know bar mills, is like what we like to do. This, this is a combination sandwich and furniture shop, but on this side, we actually have Ruby's Diner. So actually, while it's one building the way we have it packaged, it's really two buildings that nest into each other and feature anything from clapboard to concrete siding to um, to a what we call a square wave shingle, right? Yeah. Which comes down on the side of uh, Ruby's over here. As a matter of fact, even on the lower floor of Ruby's on one side, we have a garage, which is a very, very low-end little garage with a totally complete detailed interior. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want to add a little lighting there on your own, uh, well, we could have. We didn't. Uh, but you certainly might want to think about it. So right now we're going to keep with uh, keep going with page to page and we're going to start on the page that shows the full-size drawings of this kit and it says finally clapboard so join us while we build the combination furniture shop sandwich shop and Ruby's diner hi this is Jack at Bar Mills again uh, we're going to go over to the furniture sandwich shop Ruby's restaurant and the break and tire shop so it's a combination of four different um, establishments in one nestled building. The first page it says finally clapboards so it kind of talks about um, what, what we thought this building was and what it would be. As we turn the page we're going to get uh, one, two, three, four, five, six what he calls mug shops and that basically gives you an idea of what these buildings look like from all angles. The next page it talks about aging and weathering clapboard siding um, We've been over this many times on different things. If you want to go to the website, there's a Craftsman Kit 101. It talks all about doing it. Now, um, Craftsman Kit 101 is the 17 pages or a 27 page downloadable booklet uh, that's available for anybody to yeah yeah to use with these instructions as additional you know. It tips. has many of the techniques we use in in it. So um, if you have a need a go to to go find out how we did something, you can probably go to that and and find it. Um, it's the next down it says ties and brakes and it talks about um, how to put the sign on the side and we'll talk about that in a little bit later the next page it shows all of our cut files it shows all the pieces and what where they are and their numbers so you can refer back to that um, when you're looking to build the building now that X means that that part was um was part of the kit but is no longer part of the kit so don't worry about that part it would have been yeah. number nine on plywood piece number 64 p64 and so basically you have um, the clapboard building this refers to and um, it's one page of parts in this particular case okay now we have um, a elevation of the sandwich shop and furniture shop on the top of the page and then we go down to interior bracing. You want to make sure, as with all the interior bracing, that you follow all the setback dimensions uh, that it shows on that next building so the uh, bracing doesn't interfere with each other and you get a nice um, building that will go together and not interfere. And the next one down is the uh, front storefront. It talks about how you lay up the pieces. Again, um, we want to pre-paint all these pieces. If you want them as a single color, that's fine. If you want a multiple colors, you can do the different layers and multiple colors. It gives you whatever you want. I mean, you can you can play with different colors, but uh, I think we did ours in a single color. We did it in an off-white. We kept a very simple jacket yeah. on this, and also, uh, just as with some of the other um, structures that we do, the pre-printed signs can be mounted in the windows yep. uh, earlier on, because that, that bottom part there uh, is actually a great sub-assembly, and that should be really finish the completion uh, on its own as we go along here. Yeah, and if you're looking to put those signs in, remember you have to put those in early. Don't wait till the end or you're going to have to reach into the building and, and try to get those signs onto the acetate, the back side. Don't forget to test fit things and to examine them because uh, most of the issues we have with any of our structures is the fact that some, some of you don't much care for instructions. Mm -hmm. And you will rely upon these video instructions, if anything, and these video instructions only glance over what you should really be uh, focusing on. Uh, these are ancillary. You don't need these, but it's kind of 
kind of a walkthrough for uh, additional information and insight on these kits. The next page, it it goes into more assembly on the on the front storefront. Um, basically, if you follow the directions, this should go together. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you do want to put your 116 square pieces on the end trim. They're going to be their corner boards um, for the rest of the building, so you want to put those on. The next one, interior bracing, not shown. Well, it's a that's what the picture shows. But the thing to look at it says trim if necessary to fit. That means the corner trim on this side walls come down to the very top of the storefront so you want to make sure that that's in there like that way and then it doesn't come quite to the top the big uh, thing here is to actually study and look at the photos because we can't talk you through something like this just pay attention to the corner trim which is 1 16th of an inch square trim and also you have a special piece called the milled triangular wood strip yeah which is a little experimental but it's very very typical of, uh, of a 1950s storefront and that's included it's already shaved to the right angle with the kit and you might want to hold in the position check it double check it triple check it because it's an integral part of the kit and it separates the storefront from the upper stories and you're going to add the sign to the front of it you can do that at this point if you'd like um, it just uh, it, it just adheres to the front of it now there are graphics on this kit and the graphics uh, we've been kind of working them in as we go along with this kit even before you get too far um, we kept it kind of basic white but you can see we didn't keep the whole thing white because this kit was uh, to represent a building that was undergoing renovation, which is very, very common. And as a result, the painters that you see in the photos, as well as, as the scaffolding, are included as part of the kit. Uh, we basically made this part of the building white, although it does look very worn and there's a lot of lifted clapboards because it's maybe repainted, but it's not been recited. And of course, you can see the original brown to the left of the uh, second story freight door. The brown, by the way, is, uh, what's that, Jack? Is that basically a stain that you used? Yeah, that's uh, just a mix of acrylic paint and water to make a light stain, I think. It's so only the front of the building, which is the, you know, the, curb, the curb appeal of the building, is being re re, uh, renovated, where you can see the size of the building is still the older wood style that obviously the guy doesn't want to spend a whole lot of money fixing up the building but he wants to keep it looking pretty as far as his customers go. Uh, the, the next thing you see in that it shows you um, that these two side walls have a line uh, about a third of the way up and below that line is concrete and above that line is clapboard. So what you're going to get is you're going to put these two together. To, uh, what we did basically for our concrete is we we uh, painted it a light gray. We stippled on some um, goose feather tan and some white and basically rubbed that in with our finger to give it a non-uniform color. So it gives highlights and, and lowlights. It also has a couple of the brick uh, exposed places in it. We're going to just paint those the brick red and put a little bit of white dry brushing over the top to make it look like the bricks have fallen. I mean the stucco has fallen off the bricks. Now the bottoms of those walls are both number three on the side walls which are task board which is made to look like concrete just like we would have done in the Ricketts store very similar. Yep. And the tops obviously uh, one uh, the upper portion has a window in, uh, in wall number six, upper wall number six, upper wall number five which would be the right wall doesn't have a window in there so they are somewhat different there. And of course the back wall is 100% task board which right. represents concrete top to bottom. Yep and um, obviously everything has to be uh, interior braced as well so you want to keep this in mind making sure that you don't cover any openings anything vital and making sure that uh, if you do make a mistake that you have a chance to remove the stuff and readjust it as you see fit yep. uh, yeah. um, if you turn the page it shows you as a the box that's built up with the storefront and the all four walls put together the only thing I'm going to say about that is that on the top section of the two side walls, the back wall on that top section actually has a corner board, but the bottom does not. So where the concrete meets the concrete is flush. Where the clapboards meet the clog concrete, it has a corner board. So it you're talking about the vertical corner post yeah, that yeah. goes all the way up. Yeah, right? that's um, this, this oh, one, in the back on course. the back where it meets the concrete. Right. There is actually a corner post. The back piece is notched out for that corner post so it should fit right in. You want to stain that corner board the same color as your wall. It'll fit right together really nice. It, it notches right in really good. 
Well, the other thing is, if you notice, it's kind of odd, but the front wall is actually too short. That's because we have to add the yeah. cornice on the front, which, by the way, is a cast uh, resin casting. Uh, it says 14 Delancey. There was a time that you'd have to lay all this up and build it by hand, but we made it for Master, and it's, it's in the kit. And all we did was paint it and insert it, and you can see exactly. If you, if you take a close look at the photos, you'll see exactly how well that works. Uh, a little bit of a painting, your choice of colors. We kept the lettering white. Uh, we used a green background, though, and it's up yeah. to you what you want to do. You're going to glue it across the bottom, and then on either ends where it meets the wall, a little tab, dab of glue there, and it'll hold it right in place. And you could use Walder's glue. You could even use yellow glue, as long as you don't handle it, because if you handle it, it you're going to risk My, you know, uh, the two different materials. Glue I'd use together. a tacky glue, one of the Eileen's tacky glue, because it will adhere both to the wood and the paper and to the, the resin. Mm -hmm. The next thing you're going to drop in is your roof. That'll drop in right on your bracing. Um, you may want to put your tar paper rolls on it. And I don't... I can't remember. No, we did not. We gave you a plain roof. So basically all we did is we cut it. We took a fine marker and marked off the lines for the, sh the, the uh, tar, tar paper. paper seams. Yeah, and yeah. Then put it into rectangles and just broke up the, the solid color roof. Throw in some patches if you want. Now you could use regular roofing strips, but the idea right. is that we already use those on almost every other part yep. of this kit. And this is a little unusual, and it's not a matter of us saving money. It's a matter of making it different. Making it different, and here again, introducing a different technique. Fine point um, magic marker pen. I lined it up, sectioned it off, and it looks really. It looks like it was pieces that were put on the roof. And you look like you're rubbing some pastels or something. A little bit of pastels, yeah. Give it a couple of streaking and things like that. We also then put in the chimney, which is comes in, is, a, is a casting, a chimney, and then we also have another antenna put on that, that roof. Now if you notice here, now the last thing we do honestly because of handling is add like the little gang planks and so on in the front of the building. This building is largely about technique. It's interesting as heck. Um, and the whole idea is to try to tell a story as with any kit, as with any uh, model. So uh, most of the stuff that you see that's detailed quote unquote to the front was actually done pretty much last because it's pretty easy to break. Uh, it's easy to put the box together, add some strength to it, and then continue with the more delicate aspects of the building. Yeah, as you see, we added the, the at the bottom of that page, we added the windows and the doors. And sure, that's pretty straightforward. You've all done that many times. And if we turn the page, that shows us putting on the little little basically a deck and a a uh, guard over the door a little gate um, it shows you how they all go together which is pretty all straightforward you want to pre paint everything you're going to put on at this point because you're not going to be able to paint it once it's in there this building was actually inspired jack you know by by a by a, a photo in one of the dover publication books mm -hmm. because it wasn't unusual that you don't need a storefront for a uh, carpentry store or something like that because these people were craftsmen, they weren't trying to sell pork chops and sausages or whatever they were selling. So second floor rent was much cheaper, but the thing was the access, which is why you have that wonderful sign hanging over the lower uh, story that gives, uh, gives a platform where they were able to hoist things in and out. Picture a piano or a piece of furniture going up yep. and down. And it was a ma it's a way of getting very, very cheap rent and utilizing the building for something other than residential use. Yep. So that's basically the building. It's it is basic rectangle. Um, the tricky part of this whole thing is just building a storefront, laying it up, and it's not that tricky. Just take your time and do it, and it fits right in. It goes together really, really easy. Now, the, actually, to finish up this part of the scene, we're going to go ahead and talk about Ruby's Diner in a, in a moment, and of course, then we can discuss slightly the uh, very simple assembly of the uh, of the scaffolding which also comes with the kit and of course all the figures are pre-painted and it comes with little paint buckets even come we have some ladders that we've laser cut but there are also some uh, a ladder uh, or two that come with the uh, William Simmix figures so we'll do that in a moment we'll be right back with building the extension Ruby's Diner <laughs> 